And I'm Zoe. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript explores how the High Five Friday program became a national controversy, looks into a proposal for new gender-neutral bathrooms at Northampton High, and Tamped Up goes to the mat with the wrestling and ski teams. President's Choice segment tonight, beginning last December, a police in Northampton, Massachusetts, in the center of the state, greeted some students in that town with high fives every Friday. Programs designed to allow kids and cops to become friendly. But as Fox News correspondent Rob Schmidt reports, that program has now been stopped. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. This week, I explored a local story that made national news for unintentional reasons. The High Five Fridays police outreach program that had been implemented in local elementary schools in our area was recently discontinued due to community concerns. I was just wondering, is there any youth-specific <coughs> anti-bias or racial awareness training that your officers who go into schools or do the High Five program go through? We just finished, actually I just posted today on social media, our training from last year. Actually our highest rated training category, our officers spent uh, 755 hours of training on bias-based policing. So we don't restrict it uh, just to our, our school officer. Uh, we expose that sort of training to all of our staff, but also our school officer does go to particular trainings regarding issues within schools and certainly some of that is around race. Following the end of the program, a post by a local blogger criticized the decision and caused an online uproar, which in turn led to coverage from sources such as New York Times and Fox News. I got to sit down with the Northampton Police Chief Jody Casper to hear more about the program and the events that followed its conclusion. Not be intimidated or scared walking into the building, so we thought, let's take a step back and kind of process the information that we've been given and look at a way to do this better. Mm -hmm. We first heard about the program out at the IACP conference, which is the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference, which is held annually in different areas all over the United States. Mm -hmm. This year's conference, it was out in San Diego. So two of our captains had gone out there and they heard about this program at that conference from one of the presenters who was talking about kind of innovative new ways to mm -hmm. engage with youth. Mm -hmm. uh, youth engagement is a really big part of kind of the crux of good community policing, mm -hmm. so we wanted to grab onto it. We thought it was a great idea. However, members of our local community argue that the story was blown out of proportion and that the media coverage has created rather large misconceptions. It's kind of interesting. So it's um, there were really valid concerns that were raised, yeah, and yeah. I think part of the frustrating part that has gone on over the last week around this program is that there's a perception that the the school committee members or parents and families that raise concerns mm -hmm were somehow like anti-police. Yeah. And that really was never the narrative that mm -hmm. I ever heard or believed or anything like that. That's the narrative that, that went running into the national media and, you know, all the media outlets mm -hmm. that made it as this, like, us versus them type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just never was that. With, with the way that people digest their news these days, you know, they mm -hmm. see a headline or they see a story, they, they believe the whole thing instantly, they read comment yeah. threads that are you know, yeah, not yeah. based in fact sometimes, <laughs> and also horrible in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then they just go with that story, never taking the time to really do the research or really ask questions about it. This incident is an example of a larger trend in our nation surrounding police and minorities. This may be a topic that our community is divided on, but it's not to the inflated level that the media portrayed it as. Once again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Northampton High School currently only has gender-neutral bathrooms on the first floor. This has continued to be an inconvenience for many people at the school. However, there is a new proposal put forth by the Feminist Collective, GSA, and the Student Union aiming to make more gender-neutral bathrooms. I wanted to learn more about this proposal, so I sat down with Sylvia Schrett, who's been a leader in fighting for the change, and Serena Hahn, President of the Student Union. Our job is to sort of like listen to the needs of the students and balance like uh, what the majority of students want and like sort of um, the unheard minorities at the school, like people who are feeling like their needs aren't being met, um, and then listen to those different groups and advocate for them. Um, and so 
one thing that has come up um, this year is just the lack of gender neutral bathrooms. The gender neutral bathroom proposal um, is a proposal to change the third floor bathrooms to all gender neutral bathrooms. Um, the purpose of this is that because we have, we only have one gender neutral bathroom for students and there's one for teachers. That's both in guidance on the first floor and so students who are gender neutral have to go from floors farther away to get to the bathroom which means that they aren't going to have the exact equal time in the classroom that other students have. What we're doing is to ha keep the gender neutral bathrooms on the first floor while also having the bathrooms that are uh, separate on the first floor and then add uh, change the signs on the third floor to gender neutral bathroom. There'll be no changes to the actual infrastructure besides adding um, menstrual disposals in the men's bathroom and adding a adding braille Basically, signs. Basically what we're doing right now as a student union is trying to gauge like the student body's like feelings about that idea so we did we had a meet and greet sort of thing during a lunch last week and we handed out surveys about them and then at our upcoming meeting we're gonna basically gather the data and see like how people are feeling about it because we just don't really know. I decided to help student union out and after hearing about what the proposal entails I wanted to get the opinion of the student body on the possible change. After all, they'll be affected by the change if implemented. I don't think that much would change. I think that the people that are now using the boys' bathroom would use the bathroom that was formerly the boys and vice versa, but it would make some people more comfortable even if they're going to use the same bathroom. So I think it's a good idea. Uh, I don't think it's the best idea only because it could cause a lot of turmoil with parents or people who are a bit more conservative. Even though it's from Hampton, there are definitely people out there like that. I think it'd be a better idea to change the teacher's bathroom into a gender neutral bathroom since it's single stalled and there'll be no accidents or questions or anything that could upset anyone. I think it's a great idea because not, well first of all, it would like eliminate, you know, like the divide between like men and women because not all students fit within the gender binary and that's important to be conscious of and accepting of and accommodating of. So I think it's a really great idea and I really hope that the school will go through with these changes. I'm half and half on there. I think that, I think that the idea is solid. I just think that the amount of space that the proposal is for the entire third floor might be an issue. I honestly think it would be a it's iffy idea. I'm not very fond of it because if you would need to go down all the way to the bottom, to, just to the second floor, just because you're uncomfortable with it, I feel like it'd be awkward if you're on the third floor and you're just going in and you just see like a girl in there, a girl sees a guy in there. Thanks for watching. Also, if you have something you'd like me to cover, or if you're a musician who has yet to be covered on the transcript, come talk to me. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. This week we are wrapping up our winter sports introductions. First, I talked to NHS senior Jesse Evers about his final season on the wrestling team. My first question for you, I was at your senior night match and you survived a chokehold and a bloody nose to win. Like, what was that bout like? That was pretty intense. Um, I'd say that first period was probably like the worst first period I've ever wrestled. I just like couldn't breathe the whole time, but um, it was really nice to like have that happen and then pin the kid. That's probably one of the more satisfying matches I've had. So wrestling to me just seems very brutal. You're constantly worrying about what you eat and it's just a painful sport. You were bleeding, you were being choked out. So. What is it about the sport that you like to do so much? Um, winning in wrestling is sort of like winning in no other sport because it's just like you and the other kid and there's no one else there. So if you win, like, it's just you, which is an awesome feeling. On the other hand, losing sucks more in wrestling than it does in other sports, at least in my opinion, because you just got beat. Like, there's no two ways around it. And finally, this is your senior season, so what are you going to miss most about being on the wrestling team? Um... Probably the camaraderie and the f that just that feeling of being out there and getting your hand raised. All right, great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. Next, I talked to seniors Julius Snodgrass and Georgie Von Firth about the ski team, which has states next week. So first, could you just tell us how did you feel that the team did overall this season? 
Um, I thought we did really well. I'm really proud of our results. Um, at individuals, we had uh, almost every girl in the top 30, so that was really exciting. And um, we had a lot of new team members this year join us, so um, I'm really proud of how they did, too. Overall, I think the team had a very successful season, um, especially in terms of, like, enjoying the races. I know sometimes it's hard to enjoy a race when it's 17 degrees and it's like you can't see anything, but um, I think that was a positive, I think it was a positive season. So you guys practice and race at Berkshire East primarily, so what is it like having to commute so far uh, to do practices and do races? It's kind of difficult just in terms of like, it's not so bad once you're there, but like when you realize that you're getting back at 9.30, that's when it gets a little bit difficult because obviously you don't want to be doing your homework like if you're sitting next to your friends. Uh, so this is your senior year, it's your last year racing in high school, so what are you going to miss most about the team? I'll definitely just miss the camaraderie amongst our teammates. Um, yeah, just like having a, a fun after school activity just to like get out and go out to the mountain. Um, after school is super fun. I'm definitely going to miss skiing with my friends because I've been on a lot of other teams and I'm usually kind of the odd girl out. I don't have that many other friends on my other ski teams and this was nice to know that I'm going up with people who I actually enjoy spending time with and I'm definitely going to um, miss that the most. Great. Thanks so much and uh, good luck in the States. It's playoff week here at NHS. Be sure to come support both the boys and girls basketball teams in their quest for Western Mass Championships. Thanks for watching. Check out our redesigned website at nhstechnology.org for more photos, videos, and information.